Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 4 StarCraft 2 Strategy. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Terran strategy, the Battle Cruiser Rush. You like that? I thought it was pretty good. So yeah, uh, we're going to be looking at Terran strategy. The Terran player in this particular replay strategy video is August Weera, and our Protoss opponent is OGSSKS. Not a word, so I'm not going to try to pronounce it. So yeah, the Battle Cruiser Rush, pretty cool stuff here. Uh, something you can try if you're looking f to do something... Uh, that your opponent's not going to expect, because just like the Planetary Fortress Rush, nobody expects the Battle Cruiser Rush. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um, I wouldn't rely on this as a steady strategy throughout multiple games, but again, if you want to try something new, something a little off-keel, uh, something that your opponent won't suspect uh, whatsoever, then go ahead and give this a shot. Um, now, a few quick notes. If you're ever going to try anything zany and wild like this, you really want to make sure that you're going to hide your tech as best as possible. Um, playing versus any intelligent player, you're really not going to be able to succeed in doing this if they see it coming. So uh, a number one point in this strategy, in this particular type of strategy, is hide what you're doing. Um, leave your opponent unsuspecting as much as possible again it's probably not gonna you're probably not gonna be able to hide it forever and if they really are top top notch and if they really know the game down pat they will realize just by looking at your base that you don't have as much as you should and that there must be something funky going on um, but again that's kind of the, really in, at the upper echelon that that's going to be the case you don't have to worry about that so much at platinum and below and, and to be honest with you you really don't have to worry about that so much in diamond uh, at least the mid to lower tiers of diamond um, maybe the higher high tiers and then professional players have to worry about stuff like that but enough about that. Uh, looking at the build order, we started off with that 10 supply depot followed by the 12 barracks, and then we started getting our refinery. Um, now, again, you see that we're producing units right here. We're not going straight for the battle cruiser because that'd be ridiculous. They would ha all, all, all our Protoss opponent would have to do is rush us with like a couple of zealots and a stalker, and they would completely destroy us. So <laughs> we're going for you know a pretty safe opening. And the fact that we're going to want to create units to fend off any early attacks. Um, we started off with that one marine to push any scouts out of our base. We're going to be attaching a tech lab to this barracks, and we're also going to be getting um, some some marauders once that tech lab is done building, because we do want to protect ourselves from early stalkers as well. Um, now, the marauders might not be quite as necessary, because we could get a bunker with some marines in it, um, but that's not going to be as effective. It's going to help in the defense, but it's also going to... Uh, leave our opponent to be a little suspicious as well because usually if you bunker up like that at the front of your base that means you're trying to buy some time and trying to fend off uh, but again like if you if you build somewhat of a, some semblance of an army um, you get some marauders and some marines they may think in scouting your base that you're just kind of building some sort of a bio ball uh, and so that's basically there you go I mean that's that's part of the whole thing that I said prior which was going for something like this you really need to try to hide your tech um, so taking a look here at what we have going on we are building a factory at the moment um, we did that once we had the gas necessary um, after we were producing our marauder we went ahead and we dropped a factory with our next 100 gas um, now something else to note you're not going to want to try to do something fancy like this if you're going to be seeing an early rush um, now we did move into our opponent's base and this is what we saw when we moved in um, one gateway a cybernex core this was a pylon that was warping in there i'll just go so that you can see it so that was in fact a pylon that was warping in there um and this isn't anything to really worry about if we saw two gateways then we might have to worry about an early push but this is a pretty standard opener for protoss so we don't have to worry too too much um so again as you can see what we, we've got going on here is we have this this barracks and factory we're building up an army at the front of our base to fend off any early attacks and where's our starport there it is we have a starport building uh, and we're building this in a proxy position. And this is going to be almost entirely necessary if you're going to try a strategy like this um, in which you have to hide your tech. Because, you know, you're, you're facing a Protoss opponent, they're going to be getting a robotics facility, and they're going to be getting an observer and sending it inside of your base. So if you have your starport inside of your base, then they're likely to see it, obviously, once they move the observer in. Uh, so in putting the starport in a proxy position, we're hoping that they don't scout this area, basically. 
Uh, so it is kind of a gamble in that sense that we, we are kind of hoping that our opponent doesn't realize what's going on. But if you do it intelligently, if you place the building in some place that they're not as likely to check, then you can go ahead and pull something like this off. And the truth is, this isn't really all in. I mean, you are sacrificing a lot of economy by building this fusion core. But if they catch this, if it fails, you know, you can always rely on this army that you have built up and then bunker yourself up in case they move out for an attack and fend off and then move out from there and switch your strategy from there. Uh, and so, yeah, you know, you should be pretty safe in trying something like this, again, as long as you do it intelligently. Um, so we do have our fusion core up now. Obviously, we dropped that after we did our, dropped our starport because it is necessary to have a starport before you get a fusion core. And again, I'm going to put the exact build order in the info at the bottom of the video here. So now that we have this uh, starport and fusion core up, we're going to go ahead and start building our battle cruiser. And basically, what we're going to be doing here is not responding to that and not putting up the busy thing so that people don't message me. Okay, so basically what we're going to be doing here is we're, we're we're again amassing this army here. Um, this is going to be pretty strong versus our Protoss opponent. These Marauders do very well versus the Stalkers, of course, and they can also slow down the Zealots to help for kiting. Um, and our Hellions doing so much damage to light units are going to do well versus the Zealots. So we're coming up with a, just a fairly strong ground force in these Marauders and Hellions. And then we're going to, the bulk of our force here, are, are really the emphasis of what we're doing is this Battlecruiser. Now with that said, once our first Battlecruiser comes out, and we do decide that we want to move out at that point, we're going to definitely send some SCVs with us because we're going to want to use that repair ability. We're going to want to use that auto repair. People have asked how you do it. Uh, you select your SCVs and you right click on this repair button right here and it will put them on auto repair. And basically what they will do is as long as you have them following a unit, they'll stay with your group. And whenever any mechanical units like this battle cruiser or these Hellions get damaged, they will automatically move to it to start to try to repair it. Very, very, very useful. Something you definitely want to try to implement um, in your Terran push strategies where you're moving out with mechanical units. Bring a few SCVs with you. can really help uh, turn the tide of the battle in your favor. So we're going to be pushing forward here. I'm getting rid of this to help with any concaves in case they do engage us right here. We don't want anything blocking our way. We want definitely to to assist with that concave. Now we're moving forward with the Battlecruiser. The Battlecruiser pound for pound being one of the strongest units in the game. Um, this is really what's going to make this strategy effective if you can pull it off and if, again, you can hide your tech. Um, when he starts to get too low, definitely want to make sure you micro him back a little bit and that your SCVs are, in fact, repairing the Battlecruiser because you don't want to lose this. You've invested so much tech and, and so many resources into it. You definitely want to make sure you hold on to it. And again, I've said this before, um, in moving out with mechanical units, you can always go to your orbital command, drop down a mule, and use that to assist with repairing as well, um, something that's very helpful. So as you can see here, we did push out here, and with this battle cruiser coupled with the Marauders and Hellions was a devastating attack for them. These Void Rays really aren't going to do much against the battle cruiser as long as we have these SCVs down here repairing. Um, he does the smart thing in target firing the SCVs, but unfortunately, not before the battle cruiser just lays waste to the Void Rays. Uh, so very effective, very strong push. Um, as long as your opponent doesn't see it coming and they don't have time to prepare for it properly, it can be pretty devastating. As you can see, the Protoss player does go ahead and call a good game in his language, which I believe is Chinese. Forgive me for my ignorance, but I don't know too much about Chinese characters. I think that's what that is. So anyways, going back to take a look at the build order and the basic idea behind the strategy. Started off with that 10 supply depot, followed it up with the 12 barracks. After that, we get our refinery. Um, now, we start building basic units at the beginning of the game to help defend uh, against any early pushes. We started with that marine, attached that tech lab to our barracks, and then dropped a marauder. Now, we're doing that before we get the factory, because if we didn't build that marauder right away, we could be susceptible to an early game stalker, and one stalker pushing out against one marine, uh, not much of a battle. A stalker's definitely going to blow through him and then move into our base and do some damage. So we did get that marauder first. Now once we finished building that marauder, or once we had started building that marauder, with our next 100 Vespian, we went ahead and dropped our factory. Then after our factory was up, we of course started building our starport in a proxy position, not in your base, because again, the Protoss player will scout your base, and if he sees this factory along with that fusion core, he's going to know exactly what's going on. I mean, truthfully, as soon as he sees the fusion, fusion core, he's going to know what's going on. But we did also try to hide our fusion core. Um, it is in our base nonetheless, but it is behind the smoke, so that helps a little bit in hiding the tech from him. Uh, and then basically, it's just kind of trying to not 
reveal your hand, not show your opponent what you're doing, and then moving out with those Marauders and Hellions is what we did, coupled with that battle cruiser, some SCVs to repair, and it turned out to be a strong and effective push. So again, guys, this has been 4 StarCraft 2 Strategy. If you guys like our videos and you like what we're doing here, please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Keep watching and keep owning, guys. Um, so as you can see, we are pushing forward. Uh, we are as always creating support units uh, rally to outside of our opponent's base we want to continue continue this pressure so we want more backup units and we're just going to be pushing forward and doing as much damage as possible um, moving forward with these banshees